and I assume you saw this coming, but popping bottles is just a fancy metaphor for celebrating wins. Celebrating wins is just a more extravagant word for saying, acknowledging, or recognizing whatever kind of good things happen in your life. And if you're not going to figuratively or literally pop bottles to celebrate, the least you can do is acknowledge them. The Perspective Podcast is fuel for your mind and creative grind. Each week, my guests and I provide the skills for thinking bigger, overcoming adversity, and making an impact with your work. What's going on? You're listening to episode 137 of the Perspective Podcast. I'm your host, Scotty Russell of Perspective Collective. I'm here to help you build a killer side hustle and elevate your brand outside your day job. All right, picture this. Imagine you just watched your favorite sports team win a championship, or maybe you just witnessed the golden buzzard performance of a lifetime on The Voice. Wouldn't it be weird as hell if they didn't celebrate that accomplishment? Now think of this on a smaller scale. Maybe you just got a small raise of 50 cents at your day job, or maybe you landed your first online sale. Isn't that something worth recognizing as well? You'd think that having any type of win, whether big or small, would be some cause for some type of celebration or even some type of recognition. However, when you're wired like me, a lot of this gets shoved to the side because there are bigger mountains to climb. If you listen to last week's part one of this two-part episode series of mountain climbing and popping bottles, you know the blessing and the curse that can come with being a mountain climber. All right? It's got a lot of good things to it, but there's got a lot of bad things to it, especially when you're doing not doing smart hustle or having self-awareness. It's great to constantly chase the race of becoming the best version of yourself, no doubt, but at the same time, you can't lose sight of life in between climbing those mountains. So part two today of this climbing mountains and popping bottles series is all about celebrating those w's in life and when i'm talking about w's when i talk about l's i'm talking about wins and losses you know you got to celebrate them no matter how big or small they are so i've mentioned this in the past multiple occasions but back in april 2016 i had a life-changing talk a life-changing experience at creative south okay i got to give a talk one of the biggest platforms and one of the biggest creative conferences in the United States. And this was my second talk ever. And the first talk I gave was in front of 150 people about a month before. So I got to open up for Draplin, the king of design, on a Saturday morning in front of a packed Springer Opera House crowd of around 800 creative souls. And this by far was the biggest thing I've ever done. And I was like two years into Perspective Collective. I, I came prepared. I absolutely crushed it. Like I knew my content inside and out and it resulted in an overwhelming standing ovation, I'm proud to say. And I proceeded to go backstage. I was shaking, trembling. I had to take a shot at Jameson just to call my nerves. And then I proceeded to rage the last night of the conference away. Okay, I, I had some fun. And I'm bringing this up because that talk sparked my creative career with a bang. Yet I can barely remember that moment. And my biggest regret is Failing to make the time to be alone and just reflect on the magnitude of what had just happened. Instead, I spent the next day hungover as shit on my flight home working on an online presentation I was supposed to give later that week. So while you can watch this creative style talk on my YouTube channel, it's weird for me. I'm not that same person. It's good and all, but you know, I've grown a lot from there. You know, while it's still there, I'm not able to fully recreate that moment to soak up live in and just appreciate it and that's the driving catalyst for why i'm writing today's episode is to help you avoid those l's and celebrate the w's in life the message that i'm trying to hammer home to you is that you gotta pop bottles and you gotta acknowledge when good shit happens in your life from my experience constantly ignoring when things go right in your life makes it way too easy to get wrapped up in the negative things of life of when you're taking an l when you're taking those losses you know, you got to have something good. You got to appreciate the good in order to get through the bad. So for me, I realized not acknowledging wins resulted in a few things. To me, it leads to burnout because nothing's ever good enough. It also increases the odds of falling victim to the comparison trap. And then most importantly, it strengthens the inner critic's voice. And that shit's horrible. If you're like me, you know, you got that inner critic that's constantly trying to pull you down and convince you you're a worthless turd. 
So I want to pivot to talk about how we can avoid these atrocious negative scenarios with two simple yet effective action steps. So the two ways that I recommend selling W's is number one, this is acknowledge them. Duh, you could have guessed that by now. And this is pretty self-explanatory. And I assume you saw this coming, but popping bottles is just a fancy metaphor for celebrating wins. Celebrating wins is just a more extravagant word for saying, acknowledging or recognizing whatever kind of good things happen in your life. And if you're not going to figuratively or literally pop bottles to celebrate, the least you can do is acknowledge them. You know, easier said than done for some people, especially for me. So for me now on, so from now on for myself, it doesn't matter if I crush another speaking gig, I celebrate a podcast download milestone, or if I pay off some form of small debt like a hospital bill. All scenarios get acknowledged or celebrated by some form or another. And I'm gonna give you a list of the ways that I celebrate and maybe you can vibe to this as well. So one, ordering pizza or having a glass of wine with my wife. And we don't do this as much these days as I'm on a, a low carb lifestyle with intermittent fasting. Not as fun, but getting results. A uh, second way is by just doing a stupid little dance with my son, little Scotty the third. Another way is just by writing it down as one of the things I'm grateful for each day in my creative grind planner. And eventually more of this is gonna be coming your way. Or if I'm just sharing the win with my prospective collective private Facebook family group, I love celebrating wins in there and acknowledging it. Another way is just when I'm texting my parents or maybe my best friends, or maybe I'm posting it within my Slack mastermind group, you know, just so I have some people in my corner, I can, I can acknowledge what just happened. Or maybe, you know, something I'm still working on is just, I'm giving myself the day off to reflect or unplug and just, just taking a break. I, I need to implement that one more for sure. And yes, while all of these are minor things, most don't require any form of blowing cheddar to celebrate. And more importantly, they allow me to press pause, appreciate the moment, and celebrate these wins with other people. You know, have those people in your corner. That's so important. Relationships are everything. Acknowledging these W's is going to help you timestamp these milestones in your noggin so you can easily go back and relive those moments. All right, they're important. So the challenge to you is recognize your top win of the day by using one of the tactics I just mentioned or come up with your own. Bonus points, if you take a screenshot and share with me on your Instagram stories, make sure you tag me, share with me that W that you're celebrating the day. And let's talk about action step number two, okay? So first we're acknowledging them. And the second step is hoarding those Ws, okay? Hoard your victories. And this tactic alone has been a lifesaver for me. And let me add some brief context behind this so you know where I'm coming from. So this would have been the end of 2017, okay? Going into like January, I was starting to slip into this dis uh, a depressed funk creative state. Nothing was good enough. Life sucked. And this happened because people were posting their Instagram top nines around this time. And to me, it felt like everyone else was creating way doper work than I was. It felt like somebody was accomplishing way bigger goals than I had achieved that year. Or it felt like somebody was making way more money doing what they did compared to what I was doing. And, and overall, it just felt like other people were living way bigger, more perfect lives than I was living. The inner critic for me, it was, it was beating me up. It was beating me down, convincing me that I was this worthless turd. Nothing I did was good enough in comparison to what everyone else was doing. But the thing that really snapped me back to reality was this little something I started doing at the beginning of February 2017, earlier that year, that I now call hoarding my victories. So at the beginning of February 2017, I was pulling myself out of another depressed creative funk. You can go back to episode 25 to hear all about this one. I titled it Dealing with Creative Funks and Feeling Invisible. It was right after my nose surgery. I went through a really, really rough time. But... I don't know what it was exactly that inspired me to do this, but I started a little running task list in my free Wonderless app called Good Things in 2017. And in this task list, I wrote down any type of positive thing that happened to me any day, any week, any month throughout that whole year, I wrote it down. And most of these accomplishments were small little milestones. Like one of them was me speaking to my mom's small women's group on how to be resourceful and exercise at home when you're over the age of 50. Pretty ridiculous, but hell, that's a win, okay? Public speaking. Other things I listed were like huge things, like selling out 400 Deneen Pottery UFO cat mugs in under 25 minutes. You know, I've never sold anything that quick in a collaboration, especially. So 
Looking back on this list was the thing that snapped me out of that funk towards the end of that year as I was helplessly drooling over other people's top nine. And the reason why it snapped me out is because hoarding these victories and looking back on everything showed me that I did a lot of cool shit that year that I should be proud of. It also reminded me that I'm running my own pace and my own race, like I mentioned back in episode 132. I've since revisited and marked wins from 2016 so I can go back and look at that year. And I kept this hoarding momentum mentality going throughout 2018 and 2019. So every year I can see this growth. So I want to encourage you to be a wannabe champagne poppy. As I summarize this series, life is short. Be ambitious, never settle, and squeeze as much juice out of your limited existence on this floating rock in the universe as you can. At the same time, don't be afraid to be a wannabe champagne poppy. Pop a bottle or two in between climbing those mountains. Celebrate and hoard those W's. A win's a win and deserves to be acknowledged, celebrated, or recognized no matter what. It is a game changer and life is going to get a lot more fruitful. And it's a lot easier to stop getting so wrapped up in the negatives when you're, when you're able to celebrate these W's. Especially when you have other people that you can you know, celebrate them with. Okay, again, relationships are important. Celebrating is important in between climbing those mountains. Again, short, punchy episode. I hope you found value in this two-part series of mountain climbing, popping bottles. Let me know what you think uh, down below in the comment section. Leave a comment. Your biggest takeaway, I would love to hear it or share with me those W's again for bonus extra credit. As I wrap things up, I got to give a huge thank you to my executive assistant, Paige Garland, the homie, the video specialist, Colton Bacher, as well as Nick Jenkins of Bluka for all the dope theme music you hear on this show. And as you finish off your week strong, I want to encourage you to keep showing up, keep putting in the work, and keep creating. You got this. Thanks again for listening. It'd be awesome if you took the time to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and let the comment below so we can connect. Again, if you want to catch a shout out as a future listener of the week, make sure you subscribe to the show on iTunes and give it a rating and review.